How you doing, sir? Good, good. How you doing? Good. You're not on the walking treadmill. I, I am. Oh, you I are? <laughs> turn it off because I was like, you know, it's too weird for a video. No one wants to hear me pretend that I'm going to get a walking treadmill and actually do this. Uh, I appreciate you not showing off on the call today. I'll let you uh, introduce yourself and then we'll jump into uh, t- today's session. Sure. So hello, everyone. My name is Arya. I'm happy to be here. I'm the business of my executive. We are here with Tyler basically to review what's new in Speak as well as what's coming up next. I'm excited to be here and I will just pass it back to Tyler. Beautiful. And I'm Tyler Brandon, I'm co-founder and CEO here at Speak AI. It's been another month, first month of Q2 2024. Any thoughts, anything interesting that you've seen working with customers, working with the platform just from an overall level before we jump into what's new in Speak? Honestly, I feel like the product is getting so much better that to to some point that i the users don't need my help that much user is like very tech savvy nowadays and they can just like find their way through and also like the the new improvements that we have added to our platform really helped out a lot but i just want to tell people that like if you have any questions or facing any difficulties feel free to reach out and i will be more than happy to assist you if you want to figure out how to do the prompt engineering or the automation or anything else, we are here and happy to help. I would say that with anything else, working with AI, especially generative AI, there is a learning curve, but like one, what I can see like for the past, I would say a couple of months, people are much more educated in this space and they need less help. Beautiful. And yeah, I think I agree on those lines. I think there's still, you know, one of the I always change this headline basically every month. And the question is, are you working with language data? Save 90% plus of your time and costs. And this is something that I think we're thinking about a lot, but also teams, organizations, even individuals, like all this excitement around AI, all the hype around it, but people are still trying to figure out practical real use cases that are driving return on investment uh, and at the very least saving a lot of time in productivity and getting productivity gains instead of what i think can happen especially in the early uh versions of the hype and excitement is you're testing all these use cases and some of them are actually probably even creating more work than the original process that you had because you're infusing it and you're creating all this new processes that you hadn't actually thought of before. Or just as an example, maybe you're working with an AI large language model and you want to get this very cohesive, consistent response and you're finding these engines aren't necessarily giving you that. So I think that's some of the transition that we've seen is a more focus on really concise responses from these engines that have quality and accuracy and more control. And then a lot bigger focus on ROI and cost savings and how does this actually save us time throughout the organization. I think something we've seen, Aria, here has also been, we've been talking to larger organizations who you would actually think would be pretty deep into this space, but they're just starting to plan things for 2025 and just starting to get budget and figure out what that use case is and all of that. So I think that's something really interesting. I wanted to bring this up. This is my uh, current obsession here right now, and I think maybe worthwhile uh, to go through how we're thinking about this, I promise we will get to what's new and speak. We will get there, but basically built this little calculator and we're walking through this with clients. This one's specifically uh, related to research in audio and video. A lot of teams that we're working with are doing focus groups, they're doing one-on-ones. This could be like a research firm, or this could be an actual organization who has some research team members on it who are doing client interviews, one-on-one, all that great stuff. What actually happens here? What we do is we take this little hours of audio and video. How many interviews, hours of interviews might you have? Or how many focus groups might you have? Just as a common one, maybe this is 25 hours. So you've got 10 interviews. They go on a little bit more than an hour each. So it adds up to 25 there's this ratio here for basically this is a standard accepted. Even when I first started uh, working on speak, it was basically take an hour of audio or video, transcribe it manually. It's going to take you four hours to do, to get it to a high level of accuracy. So you can see, okay, here's the time that adds up if you were going to manually transcribe that hours. Now, again, still challenges around AI transcription and accuracy, but even since we first started speak in 2019, the The strides in accuracy are incredible. And there's also much more intuitive tools, including Speak, that allow you to edit that transcript up to 100% or embedding professional transcribers directly in that process that then re-merges back with the software to still get those huge time savings at a relatively affordable cost. Second part that we've seen here is, okay, great. 
now I've got everything transcribed. I want to now analyze this data and I need to do thematic analysis. I need to pick out verbatim quotes. I need to summarize this both on an individual file level and then also at an aggregate data set level. So we know for an hour of files, it's going to take you maybe four hours. And we've had other people say, okay, it's actually six hours or it's actually eight. So we can work with the client uh, or user or customer say, oh, how long is it taking you to actually do uh, an hour of audio video analysis? So we'll drop back to that ratio. Then we compare it to speak. So we know it's about a 0.1% ratio and that does not stack. So the idea here is if you upload say 25 hours at once, it's all going to be back in generally a couple minutes. We do believe there is still um, some analysis time um, you know, that's required even when using speak. However, you can see it's a huge drop compared to the ratio that you see if you were doing manual analysis. And especially with some of the things that Aria and I have been sharing recently, this AI theme analysis. And then if you combine that with the automation, which we're going to talk a little bit about today, you can basically automate that theme analysis and get this done very quickly. Aria, I know I'm on a little bit of tangent here. Do you want to jump in any uh, thing uh, as, as I'm going through? No, um, I, I don't want to jump in, but I'm excited for you to show people like how much in savings and return of investment they can receive by using Speak. I just wanted to add one point here. And I remember like when at the beginning, I used to talk to people about Speak. They were like, okay, how can we justify the budget? Or for example, another thing that I heard as a pushback was like, we don't have enough clients, right? To justify the budget for this product or stuff like that. But back to them, uh, I would say that you don't have enough clients because you don't have enough time and resources to invest into getting new clients because you are so busy with doing tasks that are so manual, right? I remember one time I was talking to a customer and she was mentioning that she's still using some old legacy qualitative analysis software that does nothing by but just finding keywords. It doesn't do like theme identification like the way our AI magic prompt does. But she was saying that sometimes for analysis, it's very fairly common between market researchers to just run that and then go home and next morning come back and it's still running. So yeah, yeah. that's the point. I hope really people understand how much you can save time, manual effort, as well as money by letting AI to take care of all those manual and repetitive tasks while you are doing the more important thing, which is more human stuff and more strategizing and freeing up your space for, for something that is actually significant rather than just yeah. the manual tasks. Yeah. And you, I think you just, in this ROI calculator, we focus on time and cost savings, but you brought up, say, if this is your firm. And, you're, and this is actually part of how you generate revenue as a firm, you're opening up more projects because you can streamline them so nicely. And what's interesting is there's this not conflict around AI, I actually agree with this conflict around how does AI fit into this research picture. But I think there's also um, an emphasis on speed in today's society and market on being able to run analysis quickly and do it in more real time uh, to get results. And at the same time, Speaks worked hard to give you references or also give you very definable outputs so that you can make sure that you're confident in those outputs. Or for example, say if you do themes, you don't like the first layer, you can just rerun that with the updated instructions to increase the accuracy. So that's the really exciting part that we're seeing here. I'll continue. Ari had no idea I was gonna pull this up, so I put him on the spot here. I didn't even know I was gonna pull this up at the start. Couple last notes on this breakdown of the actual pricing side here. So professional transcriber, we do still see a pretty decent percentage of research teams who are trying to get your basically their data to 100% accuracy. And professional transcription, that is one core way to achieve that. However, it comes with a pretty significant cost, $120 per hour, you're looking at $3,000 even on 25 hours. So if you have 25 hours of audio, it could cost you 3k just to do that professional transcription. Second part is you've got a researcher, and I would say this this is a decent range. We, we see researchers, yes, who are maybe less expensive than this, but we also see research, especially if you consider a bunch of a bunch of team members working on this all together, to be much more expensive. So you can see this adds up pretty quickly. Where do we go then with Speak? There's the automatic AI transcription. We toggle between models to produce the most accurate, highest quality results for you, and at a dollar and fifty per hour, it's a huge savings and talk to Ari and I, Ari is a nice guy. If you have lots of hours, might even be able to get a discount on that, depending on the languages and all the stuff that you're using. 
And then lastly, there's this analysis cost. And we look at this in a couple of ways, but part of the analysis is built right in. We extract keywords and stuff, but then we've also got this great AI system that's identifying themes and that can also be added. And we'll retouch on that point today, but there's some past videos we'll share um, here that are direct, beautiful walkthroughs. And even Aria has been on his demo recording grind uh, this week. So he's gonna have a great uh, video on that. Just one note before I jump into the time savings thing, Aria did touch on, hey, if you're a firm, yes, now you can open up yourself to more projects. Same thing if you're the other side of this where you're internally working within an organization as a researcher, maybe you're doing a new product launch and you wanna get feedback or you're doing some marketing, getting Google reviews or whatever, streamline that analysis, streamline the insight generation. You can move on to different tasks within the organization and be much more effective. So just wanted to touch. On that note, okay, great. We've got the uh, the setup here for this ROI calculator, and this compounds a lot. I'll we'll go back to this example, but we can see the costs really start to balloon. They don't get cheaper as you add those hours up if you're doing this manually. And they, yes, they don't get cheaper necessarily if you're doing it with AI, if you're doing it with Speak, but the scale that it's increasing at is so astronomically smaller than if you're doing this manually. So we'll go back to 25, just because this is often like a project that we'll see 25 hours of audio and video. If you're doing this manually, you've got 200 hours uh, of time ahead of you. If you were to do both professional and automated transcription, you're looking at about 8,000 bucks. If you were to just do the automated transcription with the manual analysis, about $5,000. So what is this going to take you? If you're doing this on speak, it's going to take you 10.1 hours. So 190 hours saved. That's a 95% reduction in time savings. And then what is the cost? If we look at this in speak, $138. That's the cost that it's going to take you to do this. That's a 98.28% savings. That's almost $8,000 in savings overall. So I think that's just one example. I'll just type one in to just balloon this example where we go to a hundred hours, it starts to really add up in overall cost. So super exciting. I think we put that calculator together. We'll also be working on that for a text version of this because we see similar things in text analysis. And overall, this also applies to phone calls in our area. We've also seen a lot of quality control calls where basically when we talk to a team, it's, oh, there's people manually listening to every single call thousands of calls and there's entire payrolls and huge staffing literally listening to all those calls each day. So what's interesting is a lot of that work is already codified for those team members and you can actually give that knowledge to the AI and let it run that analysis for them. Super interesting, compelling. That's it on the ROI calculator. Before I pull this off the screen, any last notes your side area? All right, he's accepted it. We move on. Okay, let's do it. That is where working with language data save 90% of your time and cost. That's where that comes from. And we just walk through a scenario on that ROI calculator. Great teams you speak, they continue to grow, but let's jump right into this. I'm out of breath. Aria, jump into personalized AI chat automation while I catch my breath here. Any thoughts from your side? And then we'll uh, do a little uh, example of what this looks like. Sure. So we have a very exciting update from Speak which is like personalized AI chat automations. One thing we realized is that we always had automation, but not necessarily people were using it. So we thought to use uh, the onboarding detail of our customers uh, in order to generate those automations for them. For example, if you say that you're a business owner who's trying to use Speak AI for meeting transcription and analysis, then in that case, we will create you personalized AI chat automations so you can receive instant meeting summaries and action items. And the other example would be a schedule automation that we will set up for you, which means that, for example, every week you are going to receive a report on what were discussed like during the entire week, as well as the action items and what are the things that are in the to-do list for, let's say, next week. 
it's automatic. You don't need to like be worried about anything. You can make changes to it if you would like to change the prompting or change the schedule for it. But basically, uh, it's all up to you. Also, you can create your own unique automations. I always like uh, suggest people to do so as well. For example, if you are trying to run analysis over like survey data, you don't necessarily want to go over each one of the survey responses one by one and run those prompts. So I suggest that you create your own unique uh, automations as well. So this is just a little demo account with some simulated details of job roles. So basically you can see, for example, this person is a market researcher. They're actually working at a nonprofit and they have the goal of meeting transcription and summarization. So this person, the simulated person on the creation of their account, these automations were already built. And basically it's just adding that little bit of context to the engine to help them produce better responses. And I think we've seen a lot of great AI systems emerge, some with a you know a pretty deep focus on say meeting notes and summaries. But what we're finding is there's a deeper requirement, a deeper desire here from users to get analysis, to get summaries that are more relevant to them. So this is what uh, this accomplishes. As Aria said, hey, great. There's one that you can do uh, instantly. And then there is also one that's scheduled. And from our perspective, what's really interesting about that is at the end of the week, you get a summary of all the files that you've analyzed. So you start to see that full sort of possibility within Speak on a, a batch analysis uh, of data. So for anyone who's signing up now, you'll see this automation run. And then as Arya said, that might give you some ideas on, hey, actually this was pretty good, but I'd like to actually get this. And a lot of people, I think in AI in general are struggling with this idea. We've talked about it before, the blank slate problem. Oh great, I've uploaded a transcript. Now I don't even really know what to ask. Now I don't really know what to do. So this is a little bit of a guide for that and helping you get something that's meaningful and personal right out of the bat with just a simple upload into the system. And that works whether you're doing audio and video, writing a text note or uploading a CSV if you've got a bunch of surveys or anything there. And again, as Arya mentioned, you can deactivate this, you can m modify it, you can just delete it if you're just looking to do manual chat and analysis within the system. The one piece that we do mention here is when you're onboarding, if you are somehow watching this before you've signed up for Speak, most likely you're not, to be honest, but that's okay. And hello if you are, and thank you if you're already a Speak user. But when you onboard, answer those details accurately because it will impact the experience of Speak and will help us compile more meaningful summaries and analysis for you. All right, so we jump into a next release. This is a long time coming. And this is you know pretty obvious in retrospect, but first of all, we release chat in early 2024. And before then it was just, you could ask a question or analysis and then you would get a response. But if you wanted to you know, continue with that conversation, you basically couldn't. We bridged that gap with chat, but Aria, you noticed something which was basically a lot of people are onboarding and to speak, a lot of people signing up, not that many of them are using this wonderful AI chat function um, that we had spent a lot of time uh, building and had a lot of technical challenges to overcome. And it seems simple, but the little icon up in the top, you can see it in here, it said chat. Even though it was there, it was highlighted, not that many people went to click on it. And so what we actually did was embedded chat right beside the actual transcript itself or the text file itself. First of all, it makes the interface look much cleaner. It gives you a couple ideas for questions and then it just makes chat much more visual and in your face as soon as you land into a file. I really like the placement right now. It's right beside your transcripts. While you're trying to review your transcript, you can also ask questions or do summaries or anything else. But I would say that like right now for the chat icon, the way I refer to it is like advanced chat because like when you click on that, then you can actually see all of your chat histories, some of the prompt templates that we have based on your job title, as well as you can view your use chats. If you're using like a prompt that like is very useful for you, you can just turn that on and then easily click on it to use it. So I would say I, I love it, honestly. And since we have implemented this, I personally uh, have seen a, a huge increase of people using the magic prompts and the chat ability. Yeah, and I think one thing that was interesting is we didn't actually know how many people were using the speaker 
filter, but a bunch of people said, hey, I can no longer isolate speakers that I want to analyze and chat with. And I thought that was, first of all, a great realization. Users and customers, thank you for even messaging us about that and a great insight of there was value. So we also, in the recent edition, added back the assistant type. Ari has talked about the assistant type several times. So there's some other resources you can check out on that. And then you can also filter speakers. So in this case, it says one or two, but if they're named, you can actually select them. And you, if you're running analysis at that point, it's only looking at that data. In particular, also nicely, a little message that comes up and some pre-suggested questions that aren't as in much detail as the more advanced chat by business type and everything, uh, but still nice way to get you started. And while we're here, just one other note, this is a great new function in the platform. You can actually drag right to left. So if you're wanting to spend more time on the transcript and just have the chat over in the right corner, you can, or if you're deep into the chat and you're getting big answers there, you can then slide it that way. So great life improvement within speak. And I will say, we actually ran a survey this month and we said, Hey, what problems are you facing? What's the next big thing that you're looking to do? And the feedback that we got was like, actually, we love the platform. We don't even have that many more grandiose ideas for you, but let's make the editing easier. Let's make the speaker management easier. So it was more a fundamental improvement across the platform, even then say the last month that Ari and I did the what's new and speak, which were almost an hour of just massive releases all packed into one month. I think that's the stage that we're at. It's a nice stage and we're continuing to optimize. Uh, Ari and I, in the last session, that's all actually came. That's all says hi, he couldn't, couldn't attend today, but he put a lot of work into this month here. So thank you, Vatsal and Saloni and Sai and the entire team who's made this happen. We had talked about this way that you can now map responses to fields and speak. And that was a culmination of a bunch of different features. We added fields first, and then we added the chat, then we added automation. And then finally we added, hey, when you get a response, let's map it to the field. And we walked through how you could do a multi-selection of file or an entire folder, run that analysis, and then map it to the field. In this case, we streamlined this even more. And this speaks to the ROI calculator that we walked through at the beginning. Still that sort of manual selection, while it was streamlined, it was fast. This just makes it even quicker. What does that actually look like? Simply, you're doing the same thing as if you were doing the AI chat, but all you're doing is instead, for example, if you wanted to extract questions every single time, you would still do the same thing. The chat prompt, you would pick your assistant. Let's say it's Aria's assistant. We could say what questions were asked. And then all you have to do in the final step is just map that response to the field that you want. Now, I don't think I have a questions asked in this case, but as an example, we could put this into standardized themes. And then now if I update this, every single time a file is uploaded to focus group, that analysis is gonna run and it's gonna be mapped to that field. Aria, anything to add here? I feel like this is a very great uh, feature uh, especially like people who are dealing with like interviews and focus groups, or let's say the ones that are dealing with like survey data, because this was an actual customer question that they were asking me, like, how can I get only the answers from the participants of yeah. an interview? So by just running this automation, you can get those answers and the AI is not going to put its opinion on it. It's just the answer that is going to get captured. So it's another great addition that we have over here. Yeah, and I think I'm not sure if you have any other use cases that we've seen. Or one has been automatic grading and assessment of calls for training sessions and way that people are submitting either uploading or through the um, embeddable recorder. Uh, we've seen question extraction. We've seen theme identification and walk through that. There's a great video and, and walk through guide on how you can quantify themes. Any other use cases that you're seeing with the map to field and the automation connection? Another use case I have seen is that like people were asking me that like at the beginning of the interview, people usually introduce themselves. Like they, they say like, you know, who they are, how old they are and where they're from. So like another use case I've seen is that they create fields for city, country, age, mm -hmm. gender, and then they will just run automations to just grab those and then put it into those fields, yeah. which is another great addition. Yeah, that's a very cool, you're almost like automatic form filling at that point. And then you can take, we have it in the slide here, but you can export to CSV or you can use our Zapier or API and basically pull that data and put it somewhere else. Just today I did, a, there was an extraction using the field 
and it was identifying if company names were mentioned uh, in that file. And to identify that manually, you'd have to do a bunch of searching. You'd have to even maybe know the company that you were looking for in that data. And now with the intelligence of AI, it can understand the way that a sentence is formed, the capitalization of that word, how someone's talking about it. Okay, this is a company, let's extract it and populate it into that field. So just another great use case. And as you mentioned, you're not limited to the amount of automations that you can run. Aria mentioned like one was for age, one's for gender. You can have all those automations stacked together and then create those outputs into the fields. And what's really great is we've talked about this embeddings infrastructure on the past. If you pulled that, it's not like you're relooking at the entire transcript again. You're just pulling the relevant information to help you produce that answer. So you're still streamlining that process amazingly, but you're not racking up this huge cost through multiple automations at once. Okay, so personalized plan generation. This was a task that I think we've been trying to figure out for a long time. Speak has always been very flexible or tried to be with how you can create your plans and build the subscription to your needs. Uh, and throughout the years, we've really identified a lot of patterns in the type of user needs, even depending on a goal. For example, if you are doing meeting transcription and summarization, based on research, our own experience, what customers have told us, Generally, a, a, a team member who's not like a, a hard salesperson maybe needs 25 hours per month. It could probably be more than that, but that's like a minimum in today's age. You've got a couple meetings per day. It adds up pretty quickly. For a salesperson, it might be even more. It might be 30 hours per week, so it's going to add up pretty significantly. But we're at least trying to help you through this journey, construct a plan that is fitting to your needs. So this is a simulated account of someone who is doing meeting transcription and summarization. It starts off on the yearly, however you can toggle that back. And then this is where you see that plan start to build. So we know you're gonna need probably 25 hours per month. That's at a minimum. The characters goes along with that. This person only wanted one other team member. And then you can also see the meeting assistant customization and the branded meeting sharing in there, which are gr both great premium add-ons. However, so you don't care about the branding, you can remove that, but I know we're going to need 80 hours per month. It's automatically going to adjust for you. So again, complete flexibility, but at least giving you some guidance and recommendation on the plan that would work nicely for you. Go also ahead. quickly, if you click on yearly, I just want to show people what happens now. Like it's going to automatically show you what the yearly would be as well, because it's going to multiply it by 12. So you don't need to do any calculations on your own. Yeah, and that might seem simple, but we fought through that. There was a lot of logic. Uh, so thanks to the whole team who who figured that out. And basically uh, in the previous version, we'd have monthly, but someone would go to yearly. They would subscribe for the yearly, but they had only picked enough hours for a month. And then they would come back to us and say, hey, I've really burnt through my time very quickly. What happened here? And so we needed to make that correction. So a few notes on the recorder here. This is a big system that's used by some great clients. And what they were really trying to do was streamline the creation of recorders, but they had a really nice structure for a, a base template of a recorder and they wanted to make new ones much more quickly. So we helped them uh, and we've given these benefits to you uh, across the system as well too. Basically clone your recorder, speeds up that recorder creation times, keeps consistency across those recorders, a big jump up in efficiency there. And in addition, you can also choose who on your team you want to send email notifications to when a recorder is submitted. So I'm in the recorder view here. Say I want to clone this recorder. Question, what is your favorite color? I can simply hit this. It's going to grab everything that I had already created in this. And also that second addition is if I have a bunch of people on the team, in this case, this is just a demo account, I can select them. So every time someone submits, the entire team gets notified or at least who I want to from the team gets notified. So some great distribution of notifications when required. Might seem simple, but powerful update and a lot of people using the embeddable recorders for some pretty fantastic use cases. Ari, anything else you want to add here on the recorder uh, piece? No, nothing else that I, I need to add. And a little bit more, I think, self-explanatory than some of our previous launches where it's taken you and I and, and Vatsal like 15 minutes to walk through what this is. <laughs> so that always feels nicer. 
a couple of last ones. I think we're moving quicker than we usually do. And we're still not moving that quick, to be honest, but we have improved email notifications. You would see this in the upload, I'm trying to make this a little more crystal clear for you. And also say, Hey, now that you've got your file ready, your meeting ready, here's what you can do next. And just as a note, you can manage your email settings. So if you say, Hey, great that you guys improve the email notifications. I still don't want any, you can turn these on or off very simply in this email setting portion. And again, maybe you're uploading a thousand files at once and email notification for every one of those is not ideal. So very simple to toggle those off and I don't take any offense. So we'll jump into one other uh, interesting piece. Now, Ariana had talked about this with automatic speaker mapping in a previous version. And okay, why are we resetting speakers? Why is that necessary? I would classify this as a known issue across the industry right now when you're trying to recognize speakers in meetings. So from a previous video, you can check it out. We basically automatically map speakers in speak if you use the meeting assistant. In some cases, especially if there's a ton of speakers, those might be not properly labeled. And so we're actually working on fixing that at a core level, but say for whatever reason, you look back and you say, Hey, that wasn't, that wasn't right. You say, okay, actually this wasn't Adam and this wasn't Oscar edit, jump in here. You can reset speakers. And because the error is coming from the connection between the meeting and then the, the way that someone enters and then first speaks. And there's a lot of interesting parts of that, but at a core level speaks speaker identification is actually quite good. So when you reset the speaker, Generally, those people are identified properly and it's very easy to remap those speakers uh, at that point. So just wanted to highlight this. We're actually working hard to resolve this issue as a whole, but this is at least an intermediate step. If you do find that there was an error, that allows you to remap those speakers. We also now let you see speakers that you had used across the account. So much more easy instead of typing every time it will be selected from the drop down. And we've also improved some find and replace functions as well as have a pretty big effort on imp in in improving speaker management and transcript editing as a whole. We talk about this embeddings and other videos on that, but basically the way that you store and cache data so that you can analyze it. One of the challenges here was, okay, if I upload a file and then I do some analysis and I hadn't labeled the speakers, then I would get an analysis back without speakers being labeled. But then what people were finding is if then they update that speaker and they reanalyze again, they expected to see the speakers labeled properly. And there was a caching mechanism that didn't make that happen. And so that's also a big piece that we're working on here now. And a couple of these core pieces help us resolve that. So you can update the speaker in real time. We update the data in the database. And then if you query and analyze that information again, you'll see the speakers were properly labeled there. So another big question from some customers and users, and I would like to say that is resolved and working right now, but I'm, I'm not sure. And Vatsal's not on this call to confirm. So it's either resolved or being resolved very soon. And we'll, we'll do a final conference. Information. We are now on to other product updates, which means we've come to an end of the major ones. And I think some of our team would say, hey, Tyler, all these changes are pretty major, but we just dropped a couple updates also that are live now and speak and very important. I'll walk through these quickly because they don't take too long each, but mobile responsiveness improved. Great. We saw, okay, there's a lot more people using this on mobile than we thought. I mean, this wasn't looking as good as we hoped. A lot of those changes have been made. If you see anything else on mobile that's not ideal, send us a note or we'll resolve. We introduced translation into speak last month. Since then, we've had almost a thousand people sign up specifically for translation. And so we just want to make sure people are seeing that it works. You get your first translation free uh, in that trial period. So that's now good to go. We added a webhook to the platform for meeting assistant status change. Honestly, don't know exactly what that means. I think that, <laughs> that means if the the sort of meeting assistant bot changes the status in the call, you'll actually get a little flag if you're using webhooks in the system here. Woo, I need to take a drink. I'm not going to though. I'm gonna keep my dry mouth going. Outlook calendar fix for recurring events and days fetched. That was just a little issue with Outlook calendar. If you've synced that to get events, that's all good now. We've removed this unassigned concept from speak. If you create a net new account, it's actually called my files and we didn't have, an ID. And so for that folder, 
the way that we had set it up. And so we made this big infrastructure change. And this is why it's, it's hard to classify it as a minor change, but allows you to manage these folders much better. You can run automations off that. You can export better. There was a bunch of problems with this unassigned folder here. One other note from that final slide here is in payment settings, Speak has a nice balance on here, but you can also find all your downloadable invoices and transactions right here in that section. And one last one that's interest highlighting, that's all very excited about this today. You used to have to click through one, each one. And now if you hold shift, you can drag it down and I can go woo and select many files at once. I had many battles in my life clicking and then I would accidentally click on one and like I would open up the file and then I would click and I would, crap, I just lost all my clicks. That's now taken care of, gone, bon voyage. Thank you, Vatsal, thank you team. Aria, anything from these other product updates or anything you noticed throughout the month that you wanna highlight? Lots of, every month we have lots of updates and improvements. It's like hard to say which one I like the most or which one is the most impactful. I feel like we are like progressing a lot and I, I don't think we're gonna stop right here. It's just constant development, constant improvement, constantly making the user experience better, as you said. And again, I just wanna reiterate at, as about what I said at the beginning of this call, that if you are not sure about any of these features, not sure about how the magic prompt works, how like the automation works or anything else, feel free to reach out. And we wanna just let you know that we are always here and more than happy to help you. You can send us a live chat, you can send us an email, and we will get back to you as soon as possible. Right. Well, yeah, and I was trying to, I, I was thought that maybe the next slide was like a book a call with us, but uh, it was not. <laughs> so I was trying to smoothly navigate into that, but that message from Aria stands. We'll quickly just highlight a few notes. The product roadmap is always growing, but just wanted to touch on some really uh, nice pieces. Um, over the next little bit here that we hope to even have ready for you for the next what's new in, in speak session, automatic translation. And this is not talking about translation uh, of files within the system. What we're actually trying to do is take speak and make it a more global interface as a whole. And so uh, it's not quite live yet, but over the next um, bit, you're going to see a little global icon here and that will actually translate speak for you. So say you are German, we love our Germans, you're Italian, we love our Italian, it doesn't matter. You're coming, it's going to understand what browser language you're using and it's going to translate it to that language. And really what we found, actually it wasn't really what we found, it was what people told us in languages that we didn't understand was a message on intercom saying, hey, can you make this work in Italian or can you make this? So we're translating and realizing this person doesn't really understand what uh, is going on uh, in the application, which is obviously a poor user experience and something that we want to correct, especially with speak users across 150 countries. We've got 165 languages in the platform. This is a very necessary part uh, of success for uh, anyone. So super excited about that. I already mentioned better speaker management and transcription editing came from that survey as we tried to plot out our next big release and everyone was like, no, just make these pieces better. So that's a great realization for us of how many people are using the core foundational elements of speak and actually just want to see that improved. And so that's our focus here. We do want to in, uh, integrate a little Slack functionality. One thing we noticed, we did get a little feedback on that was a bunch of people were copying. They would be in speak and they would, they'd have a file here and there would be a response and then they would copy this response and we'd be like what are you copying what are you what are you doing with this and so we started to get a little bit of feedback on that and one of them was a slack integration we've also seen some google docs some slides some todoist different sort of uh, crms or task management platforms so really trying to build out that integration at that chat response layer to then push that data uh, to where you want and even do that without a Zapier integration or an API call. So making that easier for you. And then lastly, increasing the speed of chat. Basically ask a question and get it back much quicker than you do now. I already think it's pretty fast. Let's speed it up. Let's make it even faster. So this is what I was, the slide I was trying to get to Aria. We are here to help. We love talking with you. Obviously you can message us on intercom to give us a call. Um, but if you really want to deal with an expert here, you've got one in Aria who's happy to jump on a call and uh, you know walk and guide you through the platform itself. I know you touched on this a little bit already, Ari, any other notes on here? No, I, I think if you have any questions, not sure about anything, just like facing any issues, 
or you just want to have a chat or <laughs> about anything like related to AI, about the analysis of the language data, feel free to reach out, feel free to book a demo. I will be more than happy to assist you. Yeah, and if you want, you can ask Arya, say, hey, Arya, in this meeting, I need you to walk on the treadmill. Yes. Uh, so uh, <laughs> you can request that he will do it for you. We did talk about building the perfect plan when this is even easier now because we pre-construct this plan for you. So really excited about that. Hit subscribe, lock in the subscription. We'll be sending you some message. We'll be sending you a thank you. And again, we're always here and happy to help. And hey, lastly, you can earn money every month just by sharing speak. This affiliate program continues to grow. We actually moved it up 25% commission gone, 30% commission now, 90 day cookie window, meaning they can sign up for a subscription three months later and you would still get the commission for that. And we've also extended how long you get paid out for that up to two years. You can get 30% commission on every single transaction. So what, what are you waiting for? There's a link here. Uh, we'll put it in the comments as well too. And I, I don't think we're gonna sit on anyone's back, but we would love to deposit some money into your bank account. And really all we need is a PayPal email. We send that out at the start of every month, as long as you've made over 50 bucks and there's a bunch of people right under that 50 bucks limit. I just sent them a message this week. I said, hey, Get one more, we're almost there, or we wanna send you some money. We love sending people money every month. And there's some people who are in this program who are making, to be honest, a lot of money. And we love sending them that way. So this is it. Thank you so much for checking out this session of what's new in Speak. I, I'm hesitant to even say what month it is. I barely know, but we're here now. Appreciate you checking this out. We're gonna to continue to improve Speak and uh, you've got a great team to support you if you have any questions or thoughts. Arya, any notes before we sign off here? All good. I want to wish everyone a very happy month of May. We will be back next month with more updates, more exciting news. And if you need anything, any questions, anything else, just feel free to reach out. I will make sure that I'm going to be on my treadmill when I'm on the meeting with you. Yes. And Aria, as I think I mentioned earlier, is has been recording some demo walkthroughs. And I, I previously I had to record every single video, basically. And people would come on a call and they say, oh man, I'm so sick of seeing you, Tyler. And now we've got the wonderful Aria here doing some of these demos and diversifying who they have to listen to if they have any interest in speak. So thank you. Look forward to sharing out those videos. Uh, Aria packs a lot of value and knowledge into those. And if you're signing up for certain things, you'll be getting a little video walkthrough to help you on the journey of speak. So thank you again um, from the entire Fire Speak team, we really appreciate it. You help make this happen just by using the platform, by giving us feedback. It means a lot to, to have you here and uh, we look forward to continue innovating and just improving for you. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day.